Hello and welcome to another episode of The Three Techs. I'm your host, Tony Tang, and joining me today is Bob Fairbairn and Stephen Brampson. Hey, guys. Good evening, Tony. Stephen? Hi there. Well, we've done a review of this wonderful little compact microphone system called the Rode Wireless Go. And we did a little test of that microphone before as far as the range and interference, and it turned out to be pretty good. So I wanted to take it to the next level and see if we could get a better sound from it with a different lavalier microphone. So I thought what I'd do is walk through the Rode Wireless Go transmitter for you a little bit here. So you can see that it's pretty compact here. It has a built-in microphone up here at the end, and normally you would just clip it onto your shirt, and you could just record without any sort of lavalier microphone. But if you notice, there's also a jack there for a, a three and a half millimeter TRS microphone. And that's what we're gonna be exploring today. Now there's a number of microphones out there that you could use. Rode actually makes a lavalier microphone called the Lavalier Go. So the Lavalier Go is basically the same as their SmartLav Plus, which is designed for smartphones. So the SmartLav Plus has a TRRS connection, which you can see here. It has a tip, two rings, and a sleeve, so four contact points. And that just plugs into this TRRS to TRS adapter, TRS, so tip, ring, sleeve, with only three contact points. And that goes right into the Rode Wireless Go. And with that combination, you'll be able to use the SmartLav Plus with a Rode Wireless Go. Now, there are other manufacturers of 35 millimeter lavalier microphones as well. Shure, for example, well-known microphone company, they have this MVL. So it's the Shure MVL, which is their mobile lavalier microphone. It also has this TRRS connection here. It's a compact lavalier microphone. And you can connect that as well into that same adapter and connect it to the Rode Wireless Go, no problems. And those sound fine. So you can clip it to the chest area and have a little bit of a better sound and be able to hide the transmitter in your pocket or something like that to get it out of the shot. I wanted to take that one step further to see if I could improve the quality of the sound going into the Rode Wireless Go. And I was researching this company called DPA, and they're known for their microphones. They make lavalier microphones, and it comes with a micro dot connector, which can be adapted to virtually any manufacturer's wireless systems, including three and a half millimeter TRS connections like the Rode Wireless Go has. So I ordered a 4063 lavalier microphone. They have different models that you can choose if you click configure, I chose 4063 because if you notice here, it says that it works with three volt bias voltage. What does that mean? A lot of wireless transmitters are five volt or higher, and that's the amount of power that it provides to the microphone. The Rode Wireless Go only provides three volts. So in order to work with the Rode Wireless Go, you need to get the version that can run on three volts. Otherwise, you're not gonna get a good sound or any sound at all. So that's why you need the 4063. If you go next here, this is a choice of their mic preamp. They only offer the Core by DPA preamp now. That's the newer one. You can choose different colors. So there's brown. Actually, that's not available, it looks like. There's beige. And then there's white. And you choose the color that matches the application that you want to use. So in my case, I'm wearing dark shirt, want to go with a dark color, so I chose black. Then you can choose the type of connection that you want on it. Now you can choose micro dot, and then you can buy the adapter separately, but you would typically want to choose the manufacturer of the wireless system that you want to connect to. So this is the tricky part though. If you were to choose Rode, on their website they show you this DAD6034 connector, which looks like a three and a half millimeter connector, and it is, but it's not the right connector for the Rode Wireless Go. To get the right adapter for the Rode Wireless Go, you'll want to go back, and instead, there's one listed under the Toa brand, and that is the DAD 
3050 connector right there. Now that is just a plain TRS adapter with no electronics in the adapter itself. So it just directly plugs in without any sort of resistors or any other electronics to match the signal. That's what you want to get if you're going to use this microphone with the Rode Wireless Go. We'll go next, and you can choose different options. Uh, you'll notice that it has a soft boost grid or a high boost grid. Soft boost provides a little bit of a presence boost. It's 3 dB at about 8 kilohertz, up to 20 kilohertz. And high boost provides a 10 dB boost starting at 12 kilohertz. You can also get what's called a concealer. The concealer is this plastic device here, which you would insert the microphone in there. This actually comes apart in two different pieces and opens up in two halves. So you put the lavalier microphone there. You can see it's kind of shaped like the head of the lavalier. And then you can snap this back on. It has pins that you can use to clip this onto clothing. So you can see that there. It's reversible depending on which direction you want to clip it. And it also has this bar here that helps keep the fabric of the clothing off of the plastic so that you don't get that rubbing noise if it's under clothing. So that's what the concealer is. You can also choose a foam windscreen, close that out, and you get the part number that you need to order. The 4063OCCB00, all that means is the 4063 in black. And then this is the adapter listed separately. So those are the two items you'll need. You'll want to get some sort of a mic clip so you can attach it unless you plan on taping it or you already have some way of mounting it to the talent or yourself. So what does this actually sound like? I recorded some samples of myself using the built-in mic. I also used these other two lavalier microphones as well as the DPA. And I wanted to play back the audio for you to see what you think of each one of them. I'm not going to tell you which one's which, but I want you to take some notes and maybe tell me what you thought about each sample. Sound good? Yep. So here's the first one. Microphone A. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Did Peter Piper pick a peck of pickled peppers? If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? She sells seashells by the seashore. The shells she sells are surely seashells, so if she sells shells on the seashore, I'm sure she sells seashore shells. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? He would chuck he would as much as he could and chuck as much as woodchuck would if a woodchuck could chuck wood. Alright, that was microphone A. Let's go to the next one. Microphone B. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Did Peter Piper pick a peck of pickled peppers? If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? She sells seashells by the seashore. The shells she sells are surely seashells. So if she sells shells on the seashore, I'm sure she sells seashore shells. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? He would chuck he wood as much as he could and chuck as much as a woodchuck would if a woodchuck could chuck wood. All right. That was microphone B. Here's the next one. Microphone C. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Did Peter Piper pick a peck of pickled peppers? If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? She sells seashells by the seashore. The shells she sells are surely seashells. So if she sells shells on the seashore, I'm sure she sells seashore shells. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? He would chuck he would as much as he could and chuck as much as a woodchuck would if a woodchuck could chuck wood. All right. You're, you're getting faster, Tony. I am. That was microphone C. Now, here's microphone D. Microphone D. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Did Peter Piper pick a peck of pickled peppers? If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? She sells seashells by the seashore. The shells she sells are surely seashells. So if she sells shells on the seashore, I'm sure she sells seashore shells. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? He would chuck he wood as much as he could and chuck as much as a woodchuck would if a woodchuck could chuck wood. All right. So that was all four microphones. They were recorded using the Rode Wireless Go, wirelessly transmitting into the Rodecaster Pro. 
I had all effects processing turned off. I set it to dynamic microphone. I adjusted the levels so that they would match as best as possible. I also set the voice tone and strength to medium on all of them so that they were at least neutral that way and the same across all four mics. So what did you think? Bob, do you want to go through this? Okay. None of them were bad. They all sounded good. A, it sounded pretty good, but it felt a little bit distant. It felt like you were further away or something. You know, maybe it was a little hollowed out in the mid-range or something. I should B, clarify that all the microphones were positioned right here in the same position on my chest. So mm -hmm. tried to make that as neutral as possible. Okay, that's, Go that's good. Microphone B seemed like it was, this it sounds more forward, okay? Like the person is sitting closer to you when you're listening to a stereo, like the vision is closer to you. Um, and the high end seemed rolled off or something to me. Not it, There wasn't quite as much high end. C? C and A sounded a lot alike to me, but there was less bass in C. And I liked D a lot. More mid-range. The vocal was fuller and and I think a little bit broader. That was that's kind of what I feel. Okay, great. And just for everybody watching here, of course, these tests work a lot better if you're wearing headphones. So go grab headphones and listen to that again if you didn't. Bob, what kind of earphones are you using tonight? Yeah, this evening I have the Etymotic uh, ER4 SRs. Okay, cool. Steven, what headphones are you using tonight for listening? I'm using a pair of uh, Shaw earbuds. It's a little under $100. It's it's the model you kindly recommended. Okay. Stephen, what did you think of the four different microphones? I took very brief two words, two or three words on each one. So I just put um, natural for the first one uh, for A. And then for B, I said more precise. And then for C, I wrote more treble. And for D... I wrote more intimate slash bass, and it was my preferred choice. Okay. Do you think that you could identify each one of the microphones based on your preference and how you heard each one? The only thing I would do is guess that maybe microphone D was the DPA, but that's a wild guess. Okay. How about you, Bob? Did you have any uh, I'm, thoughts? I'm pretty, su I'm pretty sure that... Uh, that D was the DPA. Uh, I just I just have that feeling. A and C may be, be the two roads, just because they're fairly similar. So that's my guess. So that would make B might be the sure. Okay. Are you ready for the reveal? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> microphone A was the Rode Wireless Go built-in microphone. Okay. And Bob, what did you say about that? Distant. You know what I'm saying? It seems it seems pushed back further away. So, Bob, you thought it sounded distant, and Stephen, I think you said you thought it sounded natural. Yes, okay. natural or neutral or something. Okay. Microphone B was the Rode SmartLav plugged into the Rode Wireless Go. So A and B were both Rode mics. B was the SmartLav Plus. Okay, so Bob, you thought that was more forward and had more high end. Right. And Stephen, what did you think about B? Just put more precise. More precise. C, if you're ready for this, C was the Shure, which makes D the DPA, but let's talk about the Shure first. So microphone C, Bob, what did you think that was again? It sounded good. It sounded a little bit more like maybe a little bit thinner because it seemed to have less bass. Yeah, I said more treble was my reaction. Okay. And both of you preferred D. And I think when I listen to these mics, I prefer D as well. And of course, D is the DPA 4063 microphone. And I'm curious what our viewers thought of the four different microphones. So if you want to go ahead, drop a comment in on what you thought about each one. And if you were able to identify or at least pick your favorite, which one was your favorite? Bob, again, what did you think of the DPA? Uh, the mid-range vocal was just, it was smooth. It was resonant. I mean, it just, the vocal sounded wonderful. Just the vocal really stood out. 
And it was, I would say, beautiful sounding. And Stephen, what did you think of microphone D again, which is the DPA? Yeah, so my note was more intimate with uh, more bass, and that was my preferred choice. And that's the microphone that I'm actually using today for this show. So you've been listening to it the whole time while I'm talking here. It's wired into a Rode Wireless Go and going into the Rodecaster Pro here. You can't lose with any of these, right? Yeah. They all do a really good job. The DPA does out stand out, but you spend a lot more money for it. All these microphones are perfectly usable. Right? If you heard them on their own, you probably wouldn't complain about the sound quality. The thing to note is that the Rode Wireless Go system by itself is $200. So if you wanted to add a lavalier to it, you could get one for under $100. So both the Lavalier Go, the Smart Lav, as well as the Shure MVL are under $100. If you wanted to really step it up and go to the DPA, which you heard today, the 4063, that one is going to cost you anywhere between five and six hundred dollars once you get the micro dot adapter as well as any optional clips and windscreens that you want for it so it's an investment but as you heard today it seemed to make a big difference in terms of the sound at least in terms of preference of which one people preferred there's no reason to just not use the wireless go by itself, other than the physical visibility you might have with it. It just sounds very good. Yeah, I would agree, though. The wireless go by itself just seemed very usable. Maybe mechanically, the two lav mics might give you a little bit of mechanical flexibility with placement and size and so on. I think that's the real gain on those. And then if you really want to get as good as you can, then, then the DPA is an investment. But you get what you pay for. If you do end up going for the DPA, obviously be very careful with the selection process on the website to get the right thing. That's a good point, Stephen. And I'm going to post all the part numbers for the DPA microphone so you know which one to get if you are looking to use it with a Rode Wireless Go system. That way you won't make any mistakes because those adapters cost $100 each for that micro dot adapter and you want to make sure you pick the right one. Well, thanks for watching our comparison of different lavalier microphones for the Rode Wireless Go. Hopefully you learned something here. And if you're looking to get one of these lavalier microphones, I hope you found that useful. I'll list all the part numbers in the description here that we used. Let us know what you thought of each one as well. And if you own a Wireless Go, if you've tested other lavalier microphones and you like them, let us know. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on The Three Techs. You know, I only just realized something today, which is, you know, if nothing else, we we, we have three very different hairstyles. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>